Hey folks, my name is Dr. Kashif Perzada. This is a brief talk on bowel obstructions. This is on behalf of the University of Toronto PA program at the Faculty of Medicine. Bowel obstructions can occur either from a mechanical obstruction or functional obstruction. Uh, these can involve the small bowel, the usual cause, and these cases are adhesions following surgery, hernia, intussusception, lymphoma, or stricture. In large bowel, uh, the most common causes are carcinoma, the vast majority of which, um, diverticulitis, volvulus, stool, inflammatory bowel disease, and ogilvies, more like a pseudo-obstruction. The pathophysiology, the obstruction um, leads to the accumulation of gastric, biliary, and pancreatic secretions. You develop an increase in pressure that can lead to the third spacing of fluid. The increasing in pressure also leads to bacterial translocation into the bloodstream, which leads to bacteremia and sepsis. Strangulation can occur when the bowel wall edema and intraluminal pressure actually prevent perfusion to the affected segment of bowel. Necrosis occurs and then perforation. Uh, signs and symptoms. Um, this is something you won't really miss on a patient. Usually there's severe constant abdominal pain, abdominal distension, decreased bowel movements, decreased flatus, there's often bilis and feculent vomiting uh, and obstipation. The feculent vomiting is often a result of bacterial overgrowth in the uh, proximal areas of bowel from the obstruction. Pain is very often periumbilical, constant with intermittent worsening. Um, look out for surgical scars, obvious hernias, such as umbilical, femoral, incisional, look for any entrapment or incarceration. Review with the patient any previous history of abdominal surgery or any history of malignancies. Um, bowel stance can be increased in the early stages or absent decreased later on. Tests, um, your standard labs, um, your CBC lights, creatinine, BUN, LFTs, MLAs, your analysis. Um, often they're negative, sometimes they're positive. And your analysis may show you some sim um, some signs from ketosis. Um, your um, uh, electrolytes can show you some evidence of dehydration, but these are, again, non-specific tests. Plain films, um, a useful test, and it can be done very quickly. You look out for dilated bowel loops, air fluid levels, free air. You can some you can tell sometimes what uh, the um, if it's a small or large bowel by looking at the hostra or case circularis. Um, these can help you determine which uh, level it is. Uh, plain films can miss 10 to 20 percent of bowel obstructions. Um, tests, uh, a useful test would be a lactic acidosis because with separate sepsis, necrosis, or bowel ischemia you will often see increased lactic acidosis and metabolic acidosis. A CT scan is very useful for confirming diagnosis, sometimes locating the point of obstruction and can tell you if there's a partial versus complete uh, obstruction and see what the cause might be such as uh, carcinoma, infection, anything like that. It can also help you determine if there's ischemia present, though there are signs on your plain films that can help you determine that as well. A smell bowel series um, is an older test and is often is done after admission and is useful determining if there's a partial or complete bowel obstruction. This is an image that illustrates a small bowel obstruction. Here you can see dilated bowel loops with multiple air fluid levels. Let me go back to this one right here. So this is also a small bowel obstruction. You can see diffuse dilated bowel loops here. This is a large bowel obstruction. Um, this is, you can see, dilated loops here and here. Thank you very much.